How's lockdown been for you? It's been it's been fine. I think I, I good days and bad days. I think like anyone else, but I'm incredibly fortunate to be sort of in, in the countryside, I suppose, and and um, which which really really helps. So, and also I was not planning to tour this year, so my work plans have not been disrupted in the way that many people's would have been this year. So, um, I really have very little to complain about. Um, and we've seen a lot of performers sort of continuing to perform would you say there is a it's almost an uncontrollable need to perform um, and so when performers can't they're just online now whatever it is singing performing acting narrating there's the, yeah there's definitely a feeling of restlessness i think that comes obviously with this with this kind of with the, this odd period of time um and then a, a, a just a need to feel useful in some way and um so oftentimes yeah that if if I think if musicians can reach out, um, interact with fans a little bit and perform. And then the, most of the stuff that I was doing was connected to to charity performances in some way, shape or form or, or charitable organizations, which again, it is just that thing of how can you make yourself useful uh, in a time like this? Mm. So you did um, Together at Home, the Lady Gaga? Yes, yeah. Event. How was that? How did that come about? Tell me the story of uh, um, <laughs> what that was like. Yeah, uh, Global Citizen, a fantastic, uh, fantastic platform, fantastic organisation. They uh, amount, they kind of, they kind of organise an, an amount of pressure um, uh, to direct at, at world leaders um, to legislate for, 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 you know, towards uh, progress, especially for, uh, in the developing world, um, or to to legis- you know, to uh, make space in budgets, let's say, uh, moving forward. Uh, for aid for the developing world and um, stuff like that they were fantastic it's worth worth checking out so i had done some um i kind of formed a relationship somewhat with, with some, some of uh, people from global citizen did a podcast last year in, in association with them just talking to people um, who were involved in in in, I suppose in direct action in many ways, some people who are involved in, in organization um, uh, primarily moving towards p- people who, who, who push towards social change in, in some way, shape or form. And um, so when this came about, there was a conversation that, that was, sounded like a, a wonderful, you know, as, as you know, every year they do a, they do a, a festival, uh, usually a live festival. So in, in lieu of that, I believe that this, this, event took place um, and I was one among among many many fantastic artists to sing a song. So I guess if you were appearing at a festival then you would be around all these people did you have any kind of opportunity to be around all of your fellow co-stars or did it very much happen certainly not, in isolation? Certainly not. Yeah yeah certainly not this time around. Um, the most interacting I did was was emails back and forth and texting back and forth um, I shared a song with a wonderful artist from Nashville called Mar- Maren Morris. Uh, she, she's a beautiful track called uh, Bones. And um, that was the most, the most contact we had. So it is, everything was done very much at, at, at a distance. I was going to ask you about that because um, I've seen plenty of bands still playing together online, even though they're in different places. And I wondered technically, how do you actually stay in sync with someone who's Mm-hmm. who's singing with you over an internet delay because even now me speaking to you there's half a second of delay or something so how, yeah. how on earth do you make that work it it's 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 a bit of smoke and mirrors i suppose um it's it might look you know of course it's not it's not live at, the, at that moment um i suppose you could do one or two of the elements live in that moment but usually i would, I would imagine uh, and how we did it there and how i would imagine it's, it's done somebody lays down a sort of a guide track um or does a performance usually rhythm would, would go first. And then it's sent around, respectively, everybody plays their part. Um, and then it's, it's a, you know, it's amalgamated into, into, it's edited into one, one performance and then, uh, and then put out there for, for viewing. And um, that would be the, the most, that is the most common way you could do it. You, uh, technically you could probably do it if one person was performing and you just play, you stream your performance to them and they don't, hear you as it were so that they are not affected by that delay and um, so it's, it's not it's generally not how performing works though is it i mean you all yeah, kind of yeah, feed yeah. Off each other so yeah quite a lot, yeah 
So as a, a writer and a recording artist and a performer, there are those three different elements, I'm guessing, to what you do. And I was thinking that maybe writing you could do in lockdown. I mean, that is in some ways an, an isolated thing to do, but recording and certainly performing are, mm -hmm. are something that must be very different now that you can't actually see the people that you're performing to. Can you yeah, kind of talk me through those different elements? Yeah, certainly. Um, it, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, I think it's an interesting time. I mean, some, someone once said, I'm not sure who, who said this recently, but the, the, in many ways, the laptop is, is the folk instrument of our times. You know, if it was in the 1950s, it was an acoustic guitar in everyone's bedroom. Um, now it's a laptop. And really and truly, you can do so much with, with, with even just a, quite a rudimentary laptop that right up until the point of releasing music, you know, um, right up through all the stages of those processes of writing, recording, uh, performing, et cetera, you can, you, can, um, you can do all of that. It depends on what your, what your skill set is. It depends on your experience using that technology and using, you know, with engineering, et cetera. But mm. a great deal of, of modern music today is made on a very, is, is made in the computer, you know. Um, so certainly, yes, for writing, um, I could be writing mo usually on, on, an or on an instrument, on an acoustic instrument, on a piano or a guitar. Um, writing on the computer is, is often in pop music is done more often than not, you know, gathering a beat, gathering a, a, a loop or kind of getting a feel together and then hammering out ideas. Um, what do you use? What software do you use when you're really, writing recording? I, I have... For a long time, I've I've thought about going back to school and 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 getting getting a, um, more experience working with Pro Tools. But for me, for demoing and for writing, I use Logic Logic Pro, which is a it's an Apple Apple. Uh, it's kind of Garage Bands, it, exactly. but with with yeah, extras. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's it's a very it's very handy. It's very very useful, and it's. It's, it's quite a simple interface to, to get, to get to grips with. I was actually quite surprised by what you can do with, yeah, you know, essentially free software, which is what GarageBand yeah. is. Yeah, there is a free, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a few artists um, that still would still work exclusively with it. I, I'm not sure if it does anymore. I'm sure it doesn't, certainly not exclusively, but if, as I understand it, I believe James Blake was, was, um, was known to be somebody who was a bit of a wizard at it and, Again, it's you can bring plugins into it. You can bring external software into into that platform, and you can use it in all sorts of inventive ways, which I'm sure were not desi designed specifically to be done in that way. Uh, I think he's an example of an artist who kind of broke, you know, was was a bit of a magician uh, on on that. Yeah. So, do you actually, when you write personally, is it something that you would naturally do in? isolation has it changed has this situation changed the writing for you or is this just business as usual uh, this i mean for me I, I write pretty much in isolation anyway and um so I, i've been very fortunate as i say it's it's not it's something that that i i don't i don't gravitate towards writer rooms i, I don't write with other people for me being alone and being having space and having isolation is something i create for myself anyway um, so not that, not that I'm thriving. Uh, I think everybody is, is, is suf suffering, is carrying a, a bit of the, the weird spirit of, of these times, the weird feeling of these times. Um, but I would be, I would have been carving out that space and time for myself anyway. So for me, and there is, there is that worry that I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'm not being as productive as I should be. I, I'm almost having enforced time off, you know, certainly mm -hmm. the people that, that can't go to work and yet they're, they're stressing that they're not being as creative or as productive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, know, I don't know why that is, but it, it seems to make sense to me that we, sh we should be suffering from that. C certainly, yeah. And it took, it, you know, absolutely. There was, there was many weeks would whiz by uh, where, but number one, that there's nothing to really to be, I, there's, there's a few considerations with it. What is there now to be inspired about? Um, I was speaking to somebody recently about this is why, why does it feel like days are whizzing by weeks are going by and um, they were, they were, they've been speaking to a, they're just psychologically, let's say, uh, as far as I understand it, 
because there's no events really happening in the day today that differentiates the day, this day from another day, the brain is not coding as much memory as it used to. And so it's not that the days are whizzing by so much. It's just that there's, there's nothing of, of, of note for the brain to code into memory uh, as it normally would if you had a, work, a working week in, in the office, something yeah. odd happened um, in the office one day or you had a night out this, this day, whatever. Um, so it feels like there's less going on. Also, what is going on in the real world um, is such a heavy subject when you really in in investigate it, when you really um, inquire into it. Um, it's a very, very difficult subject to, to broach um, and also one that requires great sensitivity, especially in this time where we haven't seen, we're still in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the deep of it, you know? Um, so there, there, there is that. And then also pop music, let's say with pop music, certainly a lot of the ideas that you had bef in the before times <laughs> um, uh, now at the moment seem a little bit frivolous, you know, yeah. um, seem a little bit, um, yeah, a frivolous would be the, the word I'd use in, in, in stark relief to, to, to yeah. what's going on at the moment. So you've been performing online the charity events and also you've been doing some things on your Instagram feed it must be so different to performing in front of an audience um how is it how is it for you it's it, it is definitely it's it, it's odd it's the silence um it's the silence which really and I think I was speaking to, to a comedian about that who was doing some kind of sketch work mm. or some improv sketch work on it um in a, in a similar setup on a, on a large zoom of some kind um, no silence the feedback is everything when mm -hmm. you are especially if you're i'm sure if you're a comedian that feedback that immediate feedback is is everything um, and then it's just that odd feeling of knowing that there's there could be hundreds or thousands of people looking at you at that moment and you're in you're in stark silence um, that's very very odd now when when i will say when the messages let's say Instagram live where it was, was the platform we were using Instagram. Um, yeah. IGTV or just Instagram stories. Um, once the messages start coming in, there is a sense of, okay, there is a, there's a community there. And that's a very, very good feeling. I was surprised. I have to say, I was quite surprised at how fulfilling that was um, having interacted in real time with, with people, which to be fair is not something you can do in a gig. You can't just, you can't get thrown up these silent suggestions at a show all that much or, or have a kind of a quick conversation with one or two messages popping up on your screen and then go back to a song. You could in a very intimate gig, but it, it, it might lose the run of itself also at the same time. So, um, Do you think there's any part of what's happening now that might carry over to you know, a time when we can all go back out? Is there, is there any sort side of these gigs that you actually enjoy and would like to carry forward? Or do you think it's literally a space filler? Because I think I've heard some people say, we might not go back to everything that we've done before mm -hmm. anyway. Um, I think that, I think for the most part, humans, humans are, are social animals and they, they, they love being around each other. They love being in a space with, with people that they know and people that they don't know. Um, and I think, and I, I would imagine that as quickly as we have adapted into this, and something that is wonderful about people is that how they are very adaptable. As quickly as we have adapted into this, um, we will probably find that we'll adapt back um, mm. into shows. I think there is elements of it that are very, very useful and that will be absolutely carried on or even just the, the because it's, it's now a bit more nor you know, normative to, to do stuff like this, I think elements of that will carry on. Um, there's some, been some wonderful phenomenon, you know, like, the, like tick, let's say TikTok exploding, um, mm. um, where people are writing and performing, sometimes just making a song, putting it on TikTok. It could be satirical, it could be, it could be uh, earnest. Um, but what's wonderful about that platform is that I suppose it's, it's, it's a live feed into, into the homes of people uh, it's 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 you're really just plugging straight into the zeitgeist i suppose when you when you when you're you know it's although it's silly and it's often satirical and it's it's based in memes and it has a, a language of its own self which is at times nonsensical and <laughs> um 
uh, it kind of comments on just social things and stuff going on. There, it is also a very, very interesting, useful tool. I was, I was speaking to just uh, somebody who was looking at fundraising for, for something recently. I think um, the, the, knowing how easy it is to start something like this, if, if I was able to perform into a screen or perform into a, into, uh, into a phone, set up a, a, a small uh, streaming performance setup, um, there's definitely things where that could be super, super useful for if you wanted to perform to small groups, either for a charitable cause or um, let's say a, pri let's say a, a pr private Zoom dinner or something like that. Yeah. that is, you know, kind of similar to a, like, you know, a, a, whatever it is, buy a plate uh, sort of. Yeah. I think there, or let's say you wanted to perform to, because there's going to be, until we have a vaccine, there's going to be a lot of people who are at risk for a very, very long time. So if you wanted to perform to a, to a care home or something like that, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. So um, one of the things about these online gigs, and, and like I say, we've seen some happening in Minecraft and some happening on Twitch and in Fortnite as well. So these yeah. online games is they seem to be happening for free. So there's no ticket price. Mm -hmm. And not being a musician, my understanding of this is that a few years ago, the finances for musicians changed and that you couldn't rely on making money from selling your records. It was kind of, that was a shop window into, you know, buying gig tickets and stuff. So I wondered how it works, um, without going into details, how, how does it work financially for artists? How important are the gigs? Mm -hmm. um, so certainly, I think there's, there's a very, very, tricky threshold that that artists starting out have to have to somehow bridge a gap you know or they just, you know between um investing money or losing money into something and 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 that that being a return that's often that's often live music you know if you can get to a position where you have an audience and um, that will pay to see you um because as you say at the moment the way the way streaming works etc it's it's not yes if you're a big artist um you know it's it's they're they're the way the spotify platform works the most listened to artists get get oftentimes a, a larger chunk of the of the whole of the whole pot as it were um so yeah live music is incredibly important and it's quite up in the air with with regards stuff like like um Fortnite. That's that's news to me. Actually, I didn't realize that there was a gig on Fortnite. Um, I suppose Did you those... do a gig on Fortnite or Minecraft. I, gig on I don't know if it's quite my audience. Um, so I mean, that's I don't know if it's quite my audience. Uh, maybe so. If if um, I'm not sure how I'm not sure how that works. It's interesting. I've noticed Fortnite has been incredibly um, clever in the way that they've tied in brands and and uh, mm. whether those are deals done but i, I remember the, that fast food chain wendy's had had some sort of a, a like a wendy's phenomenon where a wendy mascot was running was running through the world <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting that you know so there is a whole video games as a whole it hasn't been really tapped into as, as in-game advertisements taking place i'm sure that's yeah i think it's to do with the platform they just they can handle many many people you know, being in a, in a world at once. And so mm -hmm. the idea is that, you know, you, you use that to host events, whether it's conferences or, or gigs. I wonder whether you as a musician could, could put up with the idea that gigs suddenly become free. And so you don't make money from selling tickets. Is there enough in what a, a musician does that's not the record sales or the gig tickets that can give you an income, if you see what I mean? Is it possible for the gig to just be another shop window for what I you would do? think? I would think not. I would certainly hope not, um, because ultimately those those events would still be are still producing revenue, um, and it is. I would imagine now. I, this is. I'm in, in a very fortunate position in that. In that I have, I have a wonderful fan base and I have wonderful supporters. But for other musicians, uh, especially those starting off, it would be one more. Um, possible stream of revenue which is sacrificed uh, on their behalf because it, it's considered you know it's there there i would i would ask i would i would ask where where is an artist supposed to get money from if that's the case we've already 
if, you know, so it, it would be, that would put artists in a very, very difficult position. Um, and, uh, you know, with an event that takes place on Fortnite, et cetera, the, there is obviously, there is of course revenue being made there. Um, if it's if it's if that's another thing that the artist is, is left out of, I, we wouldn't we won't have much artists left. Um, I would I would fear in a, in, a, in a in a in a very short period of time. Um, so yeah, I would I would hope not, but I, I think. You know, I think it, it might be it'll be a small uh, sorry it'll be a slow crawl back to normality in 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 in, in many ways. I, what what more worries me is is. The kind of the the big question mark as to what what will people have discretionary money to spend on discretionary things on the far mm. side of this uh, crisis coming out of this crisis to to pay for festival tickets or or show tickets that 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 to me is a is a you know it's it's there's a big question mark there. You mentioned something about this earlier about the you know what is there to inspire one at the moment, but mm -hmm. are you writing songs at the moment and? Are you managing to write anything that's that's not in some way connected to isolation, loneliness, mm. missing <laughs> missing people, yeah. uncertainty? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, death tolls. Um, I think, yeah, no, certainly, um, I am managing to write at the moment, which is which is good. And once I was able, once I started writing again um, in the last few weeks. You know things things i found the days were easier this they're just for there to be any sort of sense of progress uh that being such such a that, that really helping so uh, so to speak you know just just with it just with the, just with the times as they are um so yeah m most of the ideas are that are more fun before uh in the in the before times ideas they they came about you know before this lockdown started um, they're still there, and I suppose the experiences that those song ideas draw from are still will still be there on the far side of this too. Are you? Is it possible to still write from previous ideas now, or, or does does the whole situation kind of taint, if that's the right word, you know, the way that you would write those ideas into a song now or, or is it still possible to remember something that you were going to write maybe in november december last year and, and still come up with the song that was almost un, untainted by the the mood of, of the world at the moment mm -hmm. um i think i think for me um when i'm when i'm writing a song it's a it's it's a very movable uh shape until it is set in stone and any work is kind of as as time is moving on it it's changing and it's moving and it's and it's um it's it's in a kind of a fluid sort of um embryonic state until mm. until it's until you know it, it can it can be a lot of things um and so I, I would never leap i never kind of pin a song down into this is what it is and, and it's nothing else because you find as you as you're as you're writing it as you change the song changes and that 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 can be said for work long after it's made. Uh, you you come to it and it's and it's and it's different. Um, you come to it three years later and it means something else to you, or um, whether it's your work or somebody else's work. Um, it's like that thing T. S. Eliot said about how um, one piece of work changes all work that 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 uh, preceded it. Um, but. Uh, it's it is it is it is a challenge, and because the moment is there's so many there's so many sensitivities um to be to be aware of you know and not even sensitivity but just just it's just it's a very sensitive time everybody i think mm. is, is feeling that um, you know. do you worry there's going to be a glut of lockdown and isolation inspired songs released from everyone over the next few there's, months there's, there's two ways it could go i think people i think people in many ways will or very possibly won't want to hear about we having having been through the lockdown as it were maybe don't want to you know be be inundated with mm. people telling them uh you know singing at them what the <laughs> lockdown is like um you know it, i think that that's such a sensitive thing to try and write i think at times yes when elements of that come through people resonate with it but people don't want that rammed down their throats there there will they'll also be uh thankfully there'll be 
there'll be time the time and place for celebration and kind of uh, on the far side of this and, and enjoying the things that the lockdown denied us um, and those there might be an upsurge of that too you know where, where did you start um I know, you know, I mean, so I, did, I couldn't believe that Take Me to Church was as old as it is, actually, um, when I checked it out this morning. Yeah, no. it was initially um, 2014 or thir- uh, late. 2013. 2013. 2013, it was initially released on Bandcamp as a free download. Oh, yeah. um, and then I, then I had an EP together. I just, I just started demoing at home. I had done a, a few projects and self-funded a few projects, and then I started to kind of put a shape on music myself a bit more and produce it a bit more and so when did you get picked up um i want to say i was signed at some point in 2014 um that song started to kind of take in church started to kind of grow i released an ep shortly afterwards i was signed by by an independent label in ireland first a group called ruby works here mm. um, who are my main label and then we licensed to to Universal, uh, Island Island and Universal and uh, Sony, uh, Columbia in the states. We kind of split split the regions and um, yeah, licensed it out in two thousand. And before, what were you doing before that? Were you were you focused on the music for a long time, or did you have I was, a previous? I, I was. I I had gone to college. Um, I had gone to university to study to study music in Trinity College Dublin. Um, but a few opportunities came up to do some demoing um, that was funded by a label, by Universal Ireland, actually. And uh, they, were, they were kind of interested in, in you know, s- seeing what could be developed and mm. ha- had a look at some of my demos. Um, the, the recording schedule for that first kind of period uh, of recording, let's say, through Universal, um, and this was just development just like let's hear you know record a few to get in with this producer and do a few demos and um, conflicted with an exam schedule and i absolutely chose i chose the recording of course and eventually made the decision that i if i'd have to put myself full time to to this and then with, it was about three years i'd say of, of kind of grinding and, and figuring out songwriting and then i was very fortunate within then i had after those three years or a, you know, some point I wrote Take Me to Church, kind of recorded it, put it up on online, developed it into a into an EP Ruby, with Ruby Works, and it, it was a hit. You know, yeah, it was very. Cool. Where, where we were saying that the videos, you know, you're trusting someone else with your baby. I suppose right from the time that you write the song before mm-hmm. it goes to video, there's also the produ- the production side, which I guess you have to trust a producer to take your original demo and, and and do whatever they do to it unless that's completely you in your case um no it's a it's a big it's a big part of it i think in my my early or earlier experiences with a producer um i would have you know you you kind of hand over you know you you because you have you have no production skills you just said you've written the song mm. um then i started just really throwing stuff at a wall and working in logic um, learning at the same time of, I was learning how to work that interface, learning how to arrange, learning how to record. I just started f- very throwing down, you know, simple ideas, but just getting the feel right. And then it became more of a kind of a collaborative thing. So my, my mm. album was, was um, co-produced, Rob Kirwan, uh, fantastic producer, um, and myself. And then moving on from that. And then uh, sometimes it's a kind of, a, it's a case of, of I think letting go, knowing when to let go of the rope, at the you know, is, yeah. is, is very important. You know, and knowing when where somebody's skills can yeah. can reach time and letting letting some trusting somebody at the right time. You know, yeah. So yeah, so Alex Ryan, Alex Ryan's my MD. So he's and he's he. I met him in college, and he's been he's still he's been with me longer than than any other musician. And we're good we're good pals. It was fantastic musician, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, listen, Andrew, thanks so much. For your time stay stay safe and stay sane and stay well well thank you so much it's great to talk to you